Good. We're going to be good. We're about to get the word. It's always good when you get the word. Nice to see all of y'all. How'd you enjoy that extra hour of sleep last night? Huh? How many of you, when you get the extra hour of sleep, you don't get an extra hour of sleep. You just waste it staying up later. Do this every single year. I got an extra hour. I'm going to do something else with it besides sleep, right? But uh, it was different waking up and seeing the sun. That was awesome. Praise God. Uh, it, you know, it's just amazing. I feel so alive right now. So alive. So alive. So, uh, like Jake said, uh, my name is Landon. I am one of the pastors here. Uh, I get the honor of bringing the word to you today. It, it is a passion of mine. And I want to get into this a little bit this morning. I believe with all my heart it's something that God has called me to do. And I want to talk about something that God has called you to. See, I think in church we use the word calling a lot and people get turned off by it because, oh, they're talking about calling again. I'm called to something. And you tend to think of the people on stage as being the ones called to something. But that would be incorrect thinking or incomplete thinking, I should say. God has called each and every single person, and he has gifted and graced you with something, all right? So we're going to get into that this morning. In fact, this is kind of an extension of what Pastor Nate's been talking about. How many of you have enjoyed this little series he's been doing on grace? Grace to you, grace through you, grace for you. Today we're talking about grace on you. You know, the word on denotes that it's on you. It's like consistently and perpetually on you. It's not just a one-time occurrence. That grace rests on you, on you. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And, and here's the deal, and, and he was alluding to Bible school and this class we have coming up called In Christ. And I personally, and, and this is not just because I'm teaching it, but I think that it is the most important thing a Christian can know. Once you are born again, once you have given your life to God, you have to learn who you are in Christ. Otherwise, you're going to be living a life um, that, that may not match what he, what he died for, what he came to give you if you don't know who you are and what you've been given in him, period. And so many times uh, we are living lives, we're living lives outside of that reality and we're missing out on all that God has for us and what he's called us. God wants to use you. Many of us think that God can't use us because we tend to view ourselves through what we created instead of viewing us like God does, like that's what I created, right? And it creates an identity problem in us. And here's the problem. When we don't identify ourselves as in Christ, we're going to be living an inferior version of our lives. When you don't identify yourself as in Christ and called according to what he's called you to do, you're going to be living an inferior version of the life that God called you to live. Amen? Amen. Let's, uh, let's pray real quick, and we're going to get into it this morning. Father, thank you so much for your word. I thank you that it is your word and your word alone that has the ability to change us from the inside out. We reverence your word right now. If we haven't yet, we're making a decision right now. We honor your word and make it final authority in our lives, meaning that what it says, what you say to us through your word is what we hold as the final truth. We will believe it and we expect it to change us to look like you more and more. We receive it this morning in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. That means so be it. You agree with it. It's happening. It's happening right now. Praise God. You guys are so good. You're so good. You're, you look so pretty today, too. Say, I look pretty. You do. You look really good. I'm trying to figure out how to uh, make this to where I can see it. I don't know if I'm just reaching that age or what, but I've been doing this a lot when I look at things. Is that a good thing? You know what I'm saying? And it's not bright. Like the, It's not bright. I'm just having to look at it like that. So... <laughs> I, uh, um, there we go. There we go. Now I can read it. All right. Let's open up to Ephesians chapter four, Ephesians four. We are going to be reading a lot of Ephesians, a lot of Corinthians, a lot of, we're going to be reading the letters that were written to the church. This is where you find out who you are in Christ. Uh, uh, the, the whole Bible is good. It is God's holy word. But when you read Exodus, you are not going to find out who you are in Christ. You're not going to. This is why we have to rightly divide the word of God. The letters that Paul, Peter, and the apostles wrote to the church, that is for you, specifically for you. Okay? It's for you. You are the church. If you've given your life to God, you are now part of the body of Christ. 
also referred to as the church. So this is directly for you. All right, let's read it in verse 7. It says, however, he has given each one of us a special gift. Say special gift. Through the generosity of Christ. This Greek word gift here is grace. This is, this is the same word that, that Pastor Nate has been talking about when he's talking about Paul says grace to you, talking to the Corinthians. How they're going to interpret this is like he's been saying, grace is like a touch from the gods. So this is a touch from God. So however, he has given each one of us a special touch from God through the generosity of Christ. And we're going to see that this isn't just, that this isn't just a, a generic Touch from God, this is a specific, special touch from God on you, for you specifically. That's pretty good news. That's pretty good news. Um, uh, in the Amplified, it says, Yet grace, God's unmerited favor, was given to each of us individually, not indiscriminately, but in different ways. Did, did you get this? It's, it's given to each of us. So if you're in Christ, everybody gets this. Once you've accepted Jesus, everybody gets this touch, this grace upon them, but it's going to look different than the person you're sitting next to. That means the grace on me is going to look different than the grace on you. It is. It's a special gift, he says. Let's turn over to, uh, go back a chapter to Ephesians 3, verse 10 through 11. He says, God's purpose in all this, so just to give you a little, a little background here, God, what he's talking about, God's purpose, the little header in my Bible says this was the mystery uh, that, that, that God revealed to Paul. This was the mystery, and he's talking about a mystery, but he says the purpose in keeping this a mystery, and he's talking about this plan. The, God's plan, he says in verse 6 here, if you got Ephesians 3, 6, he says, and this is God's plan. Both the Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in their riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body, and both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Christ Jesus. So this was God's plan from the beginning. So while God had a people, Israel, in the Old Testament, what he said, and he kept a mystery up until this time, was that he was also going to be giving this good news to the Gentiles, right? Which, that, that's you and I. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And so this was his plan. And so the purpose for keeping that a mystery up until this time was this right here. He says, God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. God's purpose was to use the church. Say church. That's me and you. His purpose was to use me and you to display his wisdom. God's wisdom is Jesus. Jesus has made unto us wisdom. God's purpose was to use you, was to use me to display Jesus to the world in a variety of different ways. He couldn't do that if he wasn't using a gift that's special to me, and a gift that's special to you, and a gift that's special to you, and to you. It can't be in a variety of ways unless there's special gifts on each person that he's called. But this was his plan, and this was his purpose, he says. And uh, this is why he says that he, it's God, it's God who places, he sets each member in the body as he sees fit, all right? And so if you think that it's just uh, your choice where you go to church, it's my choice, I can choose where I go, uh, you're right, you're, no one's going to override your free will, but if you want to be connected to the body of Christ where God has called you, you're going to ask him and allow him to set you in the church, in his body as he sees fit, not according to what you like, where you live, the job that you have that takes you over here, now you're going to be connected here, it's according to where he sets you. And this is something that I think that we've been getting wrong for a long time, and this isn't just something that, that, we, can, that we can just preach to church people because we're in church. If we're making decisions on where we go to church based on anything other but what he said for us to do, it is the wrong decision. And I'm just going to be bold this morning because I believe that the truth of God's word is what sets men free. It's not the, uh, let, me, let me get around this and say things a different way to, to kind of ease you into it and to, and to stroke our flesh a little bit so that we receive something easier. I'm going to preach God's word in love because that is what sets people free and that's what gets, uh, gets us in Christ where we need to be. It is. 
it is not, it is not um, just any old decision where I just attend church. It is a matter, I'm going to say this, I don't, I don't take this, it's a matter of life and death. God sets each member in the body as he sees fit. Let's look at this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 18. It says, but God has carefully designed, designed each member, say each, each member and placed it in the body to function as he desires. A diversity is required for the body consisted, for if the body consisted of one single part, there wouldn't be a body at all. So now we see that there are many differing parts and functions, but one body. So there's many differing parts and functions, but one body. And if you've ever been in church or you've been in this church and you're like, okay, here we go. They're going to talk about serving again. They're going to talk about joining their B team and serving. You know what? Yep. <laughs> yep, I am. And it's because I'm, I'm, I'm very convinced of this. I'm, I'm so convinced of this from God's word. Your destiny, not, not just your destiny in God and your purpose and calling in God is found here. Your life's purpose, your life's calling will be found within the local body, the local church that God has called you to. Apart from that, you will not fulfill your purpose in life and you will live a life that feels empty and void of purpose. This is why when we tie our identity to our vocation, uh, we can get lost and we can still feel like something's empty and something's not right. Because my identity cannot, cannot be found in anything other than in him and what he's called me to do. Otherwise, I'm just going to live a life void of purpose. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and here's the deal. Like, for us to get up here and, and think, here, they're going to talk about serving again or joining their team, let me tell you something. I looked at this last night. I went into our database. We have got 250 to 270 people on our B team in, at any given time, okay? I did the math on this. That is, right now, over the last three months, we've had, um, I forget the number, but we've had 76, I, I looked at our last three months of attendance and our last three months of people who have been scheduled to serve. And of the people who attend here, of the full attendance here, over 75% of people who attend here are serving somewhere. That is, an, that is an enormous number. It's large. I couldn't, I, I looked and, and I couldn't find like an actual national average of this, but there were some breadcrumbs that led me to believe that this is really high. This is really high. But here's the goal. And, and from what we believe in the Bible, our, our goal and our aim is 100% involvement and 100% commitment to serving God. Why? Because we need everyone to keep things going and, and we just want your time and we just want your money. Now, we want these things for you, for you, for you. God wants these things for you. He wants, to see, he wants the best for your life. And here, here's the truth of it right here. Simply put, when it, it's easier to hear from God. You know, the Bible likens us to the body of Christ, right? And who's the head? Jesus is the head. All right, there are actual scriptures that say Jesus, he's the head of the church, Right? He's the head of the church, and we're the body. So let's just say beyond church, for example, we are the, we're, the, uh, we're the ring finger. We're the ring finger in the body of Christ, beyond church is, okay? We're the ring finger. We, um, we wear the ring. I don't know what that means. You just think about what a ring finger does. You know, it, it, uh, I don't know, it can, it can help keep that pesky middle finger intact. You know, that middle finger of the, of the body of Christ. <laughs> that middle finger doesn't like to walk in love as much, so we're... <laughs> We're one of those we can kind of tie it down a little bit. Like, listen, that's not how we do things. We love people, okay? It's, 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 be it's, the, best fing it's the best of the fingers, right? The ring finger. So we're, we're the ring finger. So here's the deal. Um, if, if beyond church is the ring finger, we're part of the universal body of Christ, right? We're part of the universal body of Christ. So you play a part in a part of this finger here. You will see, that doesn't seem very significant. Well, that would be completely contrary to what the word of God says. He says, in fact, the parts that aren't seen or the parts that you might think are weaker are all the more important and vital to the body. And so we're, we're, we're part of this right here. Well, if I'm not, if, if, let's just say maybe I'm attending church or I'm just going somewhere. If I'm, if I'm not connected anywhere here, to the finger, right? If I'm not actually connected to it, to the body, 
how am I going to hear what the head has to say if I'm disconnected from the body? Okay? I can't hear the direction from Jesus, right? From, from the master. I can't get his direction if I'm disconnected from the body and from the place that God has called me to. And so to think that I can be a Christian and I can just live out somewhere on my own to, and left to my own devices and isolated, that is incorrect thinking. You cannot. You, yeah, you can be a Christian. You can be a Christian and live there, but you won't be connected to a body and you will not hear clearly what the Lord is telling you when you're not connected to the place that he's called you to. Listen, the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, he left and made a decision to go off and to live on his own. That didn't make him any less of a son. He was still a son, yet he was disconnected from the place where he had everything that he needed for his life. And so while you can still be a son and you can still be a Christian, you are going to be disconnected from hearing what God has to say concerning your life. It is vitally important that you're connected where God has called you to get connected at. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. It says, and we're going to read, uh, I found this interesting. We're going to read this in Corinthians and Romans, Ephesians and 1 Peter. This is what I found amazing is that these aren't just letters that Paul's writing to different churches. There's even, there's even a letter that the apostle Peter writes. So we're getting this from different apostles, and we're getting this written to different churches. So it's not just a specific issue that Paul's addressing with one church. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be issues in, in certain churches and certain parts of the body that need, a, that need certain issues addressed. This was addressed church-wide to every church and by different apostles. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, it says, All of you together, say together, are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts that God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers. Don't all those sound important? Listen to this. Then there are those who do miracles. That sounds cool. Then those who have the gift of healing. Oh, those who can help others. Well, there's those who can help others just right in front of there. those who can do miracles. And those who are prophets, all those ones that sound really cool. Those who can help others. Those who have the gift of leadership. Those who speak in unknown languages. And th listen, it says these are just some of the giftings that God has appointed to his church. Yeah. Just some. Flip over to Romans chapter 12 or check it out up here on the screen. Romans 12 uh, verse 4. It says, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts, say different gifts, yeah. for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Tell you what, if your gift is, is to encourage other and, and others and you're not being encouraging, you're probably not using your gift very well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. How many of you know it is a gift to show kindness to others? No, it's, maybe it is just for me, but I see people, I'm like, that is a gift because that is not, that is not how I would have, how I would have responded to that person. They've got a gift to be kind to others. So if that's your gift, we need you all the more <laughs> to use that gift to help make up for the rest of us who need to be better at that. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Let's keep going here. Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. So this is the third church that this is written to. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So this is the one that, that we read a lot, and, and when we talk about how God has given gifts to the church, we, we kind of reference these five, and you might hear them as like the five-fold ministry gifts, right? And the funny thing is, is that the, the, the gifts that God has given to the church, even though they, a lot of these gifts may be similar across the universal body of Christ, they're not just like all uh, hoarded up in 
in one place in the body like little cliques. Like all the pastors aren't just part of the, part of the aorta. Wait, heart, is that a scientific word for heart? I don't know why I said that. It's heart. It's like not, not all the apostles are just in one place in the body, okay? And, and so, like, if you go back to our analogy of Beyond Church being the ring finger of the body of Christ, it would be like Pastors Nate and Evan, they're, they're like part of the nervous system of, of, our ring, of our ring finger here because they're the ones who are going to hear direction from the Lord and then pass that direction onto the finger, and now we know what, what to do, how to move, what our purpose is, right? And then we'll have... We'll have different, you know, we call this, we have different gifts come in, and they'll come up here and teach. Um, uh, we'll have teachers come in to teach the word. That's a gift, right? And, and they can teach us how to be a better ring finger, right? They can teach us, like, maybe it's something we might need to make an adjustment on or think. We might have a prophet come in. We've got something like Marty Blackwelder. He'll come in here almost every year, and he operates in the, in the ministry of a prophet. And so we'll have these different gifts come in here, and what they do is they help build up uh, this part of the body right here for the work of the ministry, okay? And so th- this, is, this is how some of this works. And the, and the thing is, you have a part to play in that, and your gift is just as important as any prophet that comes up here. It, it is just as important, and we are not, until we get that, we're not going to get it. I don't know how more clearly I can say that. We have got to get this. I know that we're kind of getting deep in this ring f- finger analogy, but I think it's so important for us to, to, to grasp this truth from God's word because here it is, guys. Our destiny lies within this truth. Your destiny lies within this truth. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. It says, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. We've seen this word a lot. As each part, as you do your own special work that God has graced you to do, it's a grace that will look different than mine. It's a grace that will look different than the person next to you. But as you do your own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So if you don't do your own special work, it doesn't help the other parts grow. And and this happens so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. When we're lacking the grace on your life, and, and I'm talking specifically within the body of Christ, okay? So let's just say here, the body of Christ right here, this body, when we lack the gift that you have, we are not growing like we should. We're not, we're not full of love like we should be because we're lacking something that God has called here and set here, but it's not there and it's not acknowledging the gift and the grace on its life to be a part and to play its part. We're lacking something. We're lacking something. 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter 4, um, 7. Here's some good news. The end of the world is coming soon. <laughs> All right. And that's true. That's true. The end of the praise God. The end of the world is coming soon. It says, therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Most important of all, so it's good to be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Then he says, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. Here's Peter saying it now. God has given each of you a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another, to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. And everybody says, amen, amen. God has given each of you a gift of his great variety of spiritual gifts. And it may not sound very spiritual to have the gift of helping others, but it is of the utmost spiritually, spiritual. It's, it's spiritual. And so, again, we continue to make a mistake thinking that what's done from stage or what's done on staff or what's done in church leadership is spiritual. Guys, that's, that's wrong. It's incomplete. What you do 
is important and the gift that God has called. You're like, I don't know what my gift is. And that's what we're talking about this morning. If you don't know what your gift is, let me ask yourself, have I connected myself to a body somewhere? If you don't, if you're like, man, I, I don't know. I hear people talk about being called and having this calling and everything. Uh, I, I don't know what God's called me to do. I've been born again for 35 years, and I've been going to church and, and all this stuff. Have you connected yourself to the place that God has called you to be? Like, I don't know where God has called me to be. I don't, have you gone to a church, and have you asked him? Have you asked him where you're supposed to be connected to? I mean, this is pretty simple, I think. This is simple. If, if we just go to churches until we find one that we like, inevitably, there's going to be something that we don't like, and we'll just go to another church. And, and there's a lot of things in our lives, and this in particular that we've done, we think if we just go to church, like, it'll just magically happen. Use your mouth and ask God, God, where do you, what church do you want me to go to? Where do you want me to get connected at? And, and here's the beauty of what we're talking about this morning. If it's not beyond church, that's amazing. We love you, but go get where you need to get. Because wherever you're supposed to be at, they're lacking what you have. Okay? And you're doing a disservice to them and to yourself if you're not in the place that God has called you to be. So you, you may have been coming to this church for 25 years, and you, and you may serve and on a team or something, and you still may feel like, man, I don't, I don't really know what God's called me to do. Ask him. Ask him. He'll tell you. And, and look, it, if we're okay with any answer that God gives us, and he just says, man, I've called you to help others. <laughs> that sounds really good to me. I'd love to just help others. You know what's going to happen? You're like, man, that doesn't seem very impactful. The more, the more that you are faithful to the place God has called you to, and you serve there, and you know that he's called you to help others, when you get the chance to help, uh, take a table out, put a table up, uh, help at this event, go serve at this event, help clean up, join a clean team, the more you find yourself helping, what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself in a place where the help that you provide provides more impact and more influence, and people are actually reached. Their eternal destinies are actually impacted by you helping helping this happens this happens I'm excited about this I, I, I'm telling you I'm excited about this because you know when something good has happened in your life and it's not just an, an experience that's specific to you but it's because of the truths in God's word that are for everyone then I'm excited to tell other people about it because you can experience the same thing that other people have from God's word if you just believe it. It's important what you believe. And here's the beautiful thing about belief is when people say, I can't believe that, they, can't, they can believe it, they just choose not to. And so if you've been in churches and you've heard different words and everything, and there are certain things that you just don't believe, that's because you've made a choice not to believe it. Anybody can make a choice to believe something. So let me ask you something. If, you know, my Bible's right there, but if this is God's word, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. I'm going to say either I believe this and so I'm going to act in accordance with it, or let's just be honest with ourselves and say, I, did, I don't believe that. I don't believe that I have a specific calling and that I can have any type of impact. That, let, let's just be honest with ourselves. What are we doing? Do we think we're fooling God? He knows anyway. I'm a big proponent of being honest with God because it's silly not to be because he sees it all anyway. Honesty and transparency with God it does one thing. It positions our heart in the right place because we're not trying to conceal something in our heart that God can already see anyway. God went down looking, you know, when Adam sinned, he went and hid from God like that was going to do any good. And God came walking in the garden, and it wasn't like this game of, Mark, you know, Marco Polo, Adam, where are you? He knew exactly where Adam was. He wanted Adam to locate himself because it was important for Adam to, not because God didn't know where he was and what had happened. Okay. And the beautiful thing here, the beautiful thing about, about the call that God has placed on your life 
The beautiful thing about that is, are we, is it time, what time is it? Are you playing already? Oh, okay. Praise God. <laughs> hold on, hold on, it really is. Oh gosh, okay. I've been thinking 12 this whole time. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's like I haven't done this in a while. I feel like I, okay. Thank you. I'm, this is why, this is why I said, hey, y'all come up at 10 after no matter what. This is why right here. This is good. This is good. Y'all are welcome for that. This is good. Okay. I'm going to go back to just this right here for a minute so we can, okay. Woo. The awesome thing about your calling the awesome thing about it is that, listen, this, again, this is not just specific to church. You're calling, you're calling while it has to be and it will only be discovered in the local body that God has called you to. It is not just for impact there. It is for impact here, out here, okay? And, and, the, and, and if people think that, yeah, well, I know that I'm called and, and I know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm saved and God's going to use me to reach people and to do all this, but I'm not, I'm not connected to a church. I'm not connected over here or anything like that. And I don't serve over there. Well, what do you think? How is your impact going to be once we cross over into eternity? Jesus comes back or you move on. And all that's on the other side of eternity is the church, the body of Christ. Are you telling me that your calling ends once this life is over? If so, my friend, that is wrong. It does not. Your calling is not just for here and now. It is for there. And so whatever you haven't stepped into here, whatever have, you haven't learned here about your calling, you're going to learn there. You just may be in the nursery with some infants as they learn their callings there as well. Come on, I'm, I'm, just, speaking, I'm just speaking the truth because God's calling, his gifts, his callings, that he's not changing his mind about it, which means once we get through eternity, he's not changing his mind because God doesn't live within time. He lives outside of time. You're calling what he's told you to do, what he's gifted and graced you to do, does not change, will not change. We can either step into it now or learn about it then. Ephesians chapter uh, 1, 20 through 23 in the message. All this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from death and set him on a throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to governments. Seems big. No name and no power exempt from his rule. And not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all, has the final word on everything. Listen to this. At the center of all this, at the center of it, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. I think sometimes we think backwards and we think that, you know, there's just pockets of churches and there's pockets of churches and we're just kind of in the world. No, listen, the, the church is at the center of it all and the, and, it, and the world is peripheral to it. Whether we want to see it like that or not, that, that's what's happening. I put it like this in my notes, and I, and I kind of said it already, but once we get to heaven, your calling just doesn't go away. You know, if any of us still have that mindset that once we get there, we're going to uh, uh, change into our adult-sized pampers and, and grab us a harp and float away on a cloud, that thinking is silly, for one. We're not going to turn into angels. We're, we're God's prized creation. And we're going to follow after the firstborn raised from the dead, Jesus, who, who went before us. And so our calling doesn't end there. We still have purpose and calling. And if, if, you're, if you're serving, if you're serving in, in the place that God has called you to, and you feel like, man, I still don't know like specifically what it is I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just kind of here and plugging myself in. That, that's good. I want, you to, I want you to listen to this. Your calling may not be your current place of serving, but your current place of serving is vital to your calling. I'll say it again. Your, your calling may not be your, your current place of serving, what you're currently doing, how you're currently serving the Lord, but it's vital to what God's called you to do. Think about it like even in the example of maybe say like Pastor Nate. Pastor Nate just didn't, God called him to be a pastor and he just stepped in to be a pastor somewhere. You know what? 
Pastor Nate, even within this church here, not counting the church he served at where they're at right now and, and honoring those pastors, he, I know he served in children's here. He's taught children. He's taught youth for years. He's, he's, he's painted these walls. He's, he's worked. Uh, he's done maintenance. He's done he's, all this stuff. You don't just step into the fullness of whatever God's called you to. You grow into it, and faithfulness is required. Faithfulness is required. You know, and, and it's one of these things. God has to know that he can trust you with what he's called you to. That's why he doesn't just give you, oh, here you go. Here's your calling. Here's all you need. Go at it. God, God's not going to do that. That would be a bad father. If I just went and gave my, four, my seven-year-old my credit card and say, go nuts, that would be dumb. I can't trust her with that. You know why? Because she still circles everything in the magazine that she sees. <laughs> she still wants this and that and this and that and that and that. But as she grows and learns and becomes faithful, I can begin to trust her with that. Like, this is why tithing is important to God. Let me just get off on a tangent real quick. This is why tithing is important to God. And tithe is 10%. So for us to say that tithe is anything less than 10% is just to basically call God a liar. And I just, I don't feel like giving 10%. I don't think it's 10% for me. I'm just going to give whatever I feel like. Well, okay. But the purpose of tithing is for God to have your heart. So for you to say, I'm not going to give what God has required me to give is saying, I'm not going to give him all of my heart. I'm just going to give him a little bit and pieces of it. My friend, God can't trust you with the real riches, with real treasures, if he can't trust us in the very least, which he calls money. Your calling is so more valuable than money. Because like most other things in this life, that's all going to disappear once we cross over into eternity. Your calling will not. It will not. God wants your heart. He wants your heart. Let's close with this last scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. Paul says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Is our aim to live a life worthy of the call we've been trusted with? Or are we settling for something far less than what our calling calls for? See, I, I think we make the mistake that um, we, we, we feel like maybe God's called us to serve in a place or we don't maybe feel like God's called us to anything. We're just here serving. And I think we make the mistake of placing the value on what our serving brings. But you can't, you can't place value on what serving in the body of Christ does. God has already placed value on that. So when you assign a value to what you do and what God's called you to, it's not going to be as high as the value he's already assigned to it, and therefore you're not going to see it accurately. God's already placed value on that. Your gift, whatever it is, helping, for example, it increases your impact and influence the longer you're faithful to employ it for God's glory. And so I'm not up here saying that everyone's called to, to a certain thing. Everyone in here is called to something different. And even if it's similar, it's still different because the impact where you can have that at is going to be different than where someone else can have that at. But God's called you. He has graced you with something very special and unique to you, to you, and we're to use it for his glory. So I want you to ask yourself this question as we go today. Listen, if, if we're coming in and out of church and it's just a Sunday thing and we come in out of church because, you know, this is just what we've done and it's what we've been taught, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you right now. You got to stop coming to church for that reason. You need to come to church to meet with Jesus. What, what just happened here this morning? I, I mean, I don't know if, if there's anyone in here who thought there was anything that was a show about what just happened. Everything that, that Kyle was saying, the worship song, it, it is the truth and it was the power and the presence of God to set someone free right now. And I'm like the least emotional person ever. And I, and I was crying for like 10 minutes there. Because the presence of God is real. And, and what happened this morning, I believe that people were set free and delivered and the impact.
importance and the value of being connected to a place where there is life. If you're disconnected from the body, you're disconnected from the life of Jesus. And the song we were singing this morning, House of Miracles, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Guys, barely over a year ago, we ex- my family experienced a miracle actually on this property here. And the reason I was crying is because I was taken back then. And if you don't know, our daughter was in an accident and like bad, bad, life-threatening thing. And I ran back here to where she was and her head was completely split. I mean, many of you saw it, actually. I don't want to picture it again. I don't even like talking about this, honestly, but when I was just holding her there, and she's saying, Daddy, I can't breathe. Daddy, I I can't breathe. And so I'm holding my child thinking that is she dying right now? But because of the place that I was connected to and because of the word of God that was able to form on the inside of me because I stayed connected to a place. I said almost the exact same thing this song says. You're going to live in the name of Jesus. I command the life of God to come into your body right now. And apart from and disconnected from the head of the church, from Jesus, you may not be able to say the same type of things. And the reason that, it's not that this building is a house of miracles. It's that the people, the body of Christ here, form a place where miracles can be because we make up the body of Christ and the body of Christ performed miracles all over the earth when he was on the earth. And we're to be doing the same thing now. Miracles can happen, but miracles won't happen. And you know, there are countless people who helped in various ways during that thing right there. And it all looked different how they were helping, yet they were employing their gifts and a miracle happened because of that. I didn't even plan on talking about any of this this morning, but this is why I said it is vital. It is life and death where you connect yourself to in the body of Christ. Take it out of your own hands as your own choice of personal preference and ask God, where have you connected me to? Because my life, my children's life, someone else's life could be hanging in the balance that I could have an impact on because of how you've specially and uniquely graced me with just the ability to help someone. Guys, this is important. It's important. So what grace gift is given to you that you're using to minister to others? Ask yourself that question. What grace, what gift has God placed on you that's been given to you that you're currently using to minister to others? Like, if you're okay to just if you're okay to just walk out these doors and just come back and we'll just keep rolling message after message without you know any change being applied it's only going to last for so long many of you have been have been coming to a church have been coming to this church for a long time maybe maybe on and off for for different seasons or whatever god wants you connected he wants you connected for you Your life is going to be found here. And in the day and time in which we're living, Peter said it back then, the end of the world is coming. Nothing's really changed. Feels like it's coming even more now with everything that's going on. But you want to find yourself connected to the body of Christ right now. Connected, in, all in. There's nothing more important going going on in the world today. Nothing new. Anyway, that's just the message God laid on my heart to bring you guys this morning because it's, I think it's important. It's changed my life. It has changed my life. I, I, um, thank you all seven of you who got that. I pray that God bless you. Give me one more minute real quick. For me, 
when I, I heard very clearly. If you, if you haven't heard very clearly from the Lord, then it's only a matter of time if you continue to position yourself under where the Lord speaks. And you say that I can't hear from the Lord. But this was something, this wasn't something that God audibly land in. You are to be a teacher of my word. And I just, it was just on the inside after reading my word and praying when I was 21 years old or so. And, and when I know that God said, hey, I want you to teach my word and I want you to fund my kingdom. Fund my kingdom is, I know, very churchy type talk, but you know what that means? I want you to give towards my cause. Be a giver. I knew what that meant. I'm like, cool. I love that calling because that means I just need to make a lot of money so I can give a lot of it. I like that a lot. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to teach your word too. Okay, I'm going to be independently wealthy so I can give a lot and I can also have time to teach your word, right? That's just, this was my thinking. And, and when I knew that God had called me to this, it was in a season in my life where I was 21 years old. I was married for, we'd been married a few years, but we were in church every Sunday, every Wednesday, anytime they had prayer. We were attending Bible school on Tuesday and Thursday nights. We were here, we were connected, we were serving in different areas. I used to serve in AVL back when it was a little square box right back there, and the two of us could fit back there. It was wild. I, I taught kids, I, I've, I've served in youth, I've, I've cleaned the church, I, I'm still cleaning the church. It's amazing. You should clean with us. But, but when you're connected to the body, when you're connected to the body, you will find out what God has called you for. And what happened was, I, when he told me that, I never ever envisioned myself being on staff at a church, ever. In fact, I mentally opposed it. Like, I know I don't have to be on staff at a church to have the ability to teach. I could, you know, I could go with my friends and teach them the word of God. So don't, don't put constraints or, or conditions on what God, you think God has called you to do. You just, sir, and what I, you know what I did? I didn't just start doing those things in some extravagant way. I continued serving where I was at. And what happened is the Bible says that your gift makes room for you and it opens doors for you. And when you continue serving faithfully, what happened is I, I began to have little avenues where I could teach God's word and I could bring an impact in the area that God had graced me for, Right? And, and, and I was able to, to give and, and do that. And it's amazing to walk in the fullness of what God's called you to. And here's the thing. I've not always walked in, and I'm still not walking in the fullness of what God's called me for. In fact, he called me to do those two things. And two weeks ago, he said uh, something that I said earlier this morning. You're settling for something far less than what your calling calls for. When Trey Bollinger was on stage two Sundays ago or whenever that was, and he talked about the Travis, the, not Travis Matthews, my gosh. <laughs> cool clothes, but, but the Matthews bow guy and how he found out that this guy, this Matt, the guy who runs Matthews bows or whatever, he like paid the salary of 800 missionaries personally. He just did that. And, and I know that God had called me to fund the kingdom. He was like, you're, you're living for far less than what your calling calls for. And, and you, you know, I haven't reached out, extended my faith for more. And, and because what happens is we think that our jobs or our vocation will limit the amount of financial increase that we can have. But that's not what the word of God teaches. When you sow a seed, you're going to reap the harvest from that seed. So I don't care where you're at financially. You can always increase because you have seed. Okay. And so I said, why am I not? Why am I not paying the full salary of a missionary? Maybe I should be. Well, then I've got areas to grow in my calling, and I know what it takes to get there. I want to go by what God's Word says. I want to sow seed, and I want to find myself in a place where I can fund more and more and more in God's kingdom. And you can do the same. Wherever you're at, whatever you feel God has called or led you to do, just take a step. Just take a step and serve. Get plugged in and serve and be faithful. And, and as you grow, as you continue doing that, you're going to just be able to look back and say, wow, I know God had kind of put it on my heart to do this or to, I, you know, he's given me the gift to sing and I joined the worship team and you're going to have an impact there. I wish that was my gift. It was. If, if that's your gift and you're not using it, I want to punch you in the neck because I want to sing. So if you can sing, stop holding out. Stop holding out on us. All right, sorry guys, I know I kept you a little bit longer, but this is important, it's important, 
it, it's a life or death thing. So I want to encourage you, don't leave this place and just kind of forget about it. Let's go to the next one. Let's ask God. Ask him. He wants to tell you. He loves you so much. Amen. Hey, if you need prayer for anything, if there's anything that we can agree with you with as the leaders of the church or as, uh, not leaders, just as people who want to pray with you and know God's word, we'll be up here afterwards. Come up and we'll be glad to do that. Otherwise, we love y'all. Have a great fallish November 1st. You are dismissed.